Although massive sets like the Avengers Tower or UCS Millennium Falcon may get all the love, some of LEGO's most creative sets are, in fact, very small ones. Let's explore LEGO's funniest, cleverest, and most unique tiny sets. Some of the best and earliest very tiny LEGO sets were released under the classic space line. This was one of the first themes to feature modern style minifigures, so it was a great choice to test the market for these small builds. In 1979, LEGO put out the Space Scooter and the Space Buggy sets, both of which came with 20 pieces and a single Spaceman minifigure. These kinds of sets were such a hit that they continued selling well into the 80s, but there's one that's worthy of a special mention, set 6807. This is the smallest space set to feature what would become a staple of the series, a small brick-built robot companion. These became so synonymous with classic space that we even got one in the newly updated Galaxy the Explorer set a couple years ago. Now, in 1987, LEGO added a new twist onto space exploration as they introduced the enemy space factions of Blacktron and Futron. This series ran until 1990, and in that time we got 17 amazing sets, but there's one that is just fantastic. This one was simply called Minifigure Pack, which was a quite appropriate name considering that this set came with 42 pieces, of which 36 of them were used to create the package's six minifigures. And boy, these are some classic figures. The Blacktron Spacemen are some of my favorite old school figures, and on top of this, the package came with a Futron Spaceman in yellow, red, blue, and black. Today, a red Futron minifigure can sell for as much as $45 on its own as it's only ever appeared in two sets, this one and the Cosmic Laser Launcher. However, LEGO began to master the art of tiny sets and once again flexed its creative muscles for Mtron, a new space faction. I mean, just look at this clever vehicle constructed with only 31 LEGO bricks, or this one with only 26 called the Pulsar Charger released in 1990. Additionally, there was the Beacon Tracer with 40 pieces and the Vector Detector with a whopping 62. One of the best things about this series is just how consistent all of these sets look. Everything in this line was red and black, with very abundant use of these translucent green elements. Now, remember earlier when I mentioned Blacktron? Well, they were pretty popular and got their very own sequel series. Officially, this line was known as Blacktron Future Generation, but most fans simply refer to it as Blacktron 2 these days. This line only ran for a year, but put out 14 sets, and a surprising number of them were tiny, with over half of them containing fewer than one 100 pieces. The smallest is the Galactic Scout with only 23. Only slightly larger, we've got the Grid Trekker with 25 pieces and the Scout Patrol Ship with an even 30. There's also my personal favorite, the Two Pilot Craft. This set came with only 34 pieces, but included two minifigures, each of which seemed to be controlling half of the plane. I'm sure that's super safe. The best looking of these sets, though, has got to be the Supernova 2 with 42 pieces. What can I say? I'm a sucker for these green panel pieces. On that note, I've got to give an honorable mention to the Allied Avenger set from this line. With exactly 100 pieces, it isn't exactly tiny per se, but it manages to do so much with those pieces that it's hard to believe that the count is so small. Eventually, LEGO got so advanced that we began receiving sets such as 2009's Squidman Escape from the Space Police 3 theme. I just love this alien head. In fact, it's quite a rare piece, occurring only a handful of times across a few different color schemes. However, perhaps the weirdest and most creative tiny LEGO sets are not space-themed at all. Let me show you, and as I do, please take two seconds to tap that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Alright, so landing back on Earth, the LEGO City Police have some questionable tactics. Case in point, 2019's 33-piece Sky Police Jetpack set. While LEGO City seems to be overrun with bad guys, the police force there famously doesn't carry guns, meaning that they've got to resort to more extreme measures to fight crime, using a jetpack to follow the suspicious drone and swoop down to make the arrest. Now that's epic. But you see, the officers in LEGO City have a truly impressive range of very, very small vehicles at their disposal, from the 16-piece police dinghy to this police BMX bike and everything in between, there's no shortage of small builds for these guys, but there is one that stands out. In 2016, LEGO released the Police Chase set as a promotional freebie in a few countries. This set came with 37 pieces and no minifigures, but it also included a really weird piece, a large cardboard element. 
This folding piece was meant to serve as a racetrack for the cars, and there was even a scoreboard included. However, the quality of the cardboard wasn't great, and the set hasn't maintained any love over the years. Even though it isn't really valuable, trying to find one of these pieces today is nearly impossible, especially if you want it in good condition. But a fun little addition to any LEGO City can be found in the promotional balloon cart polybag from 2014. The balloons themselves are nice little builds, and the detail on the helium tanks looks great. But the best thing here is actually the uninflated balloons in storage. LEGO simply used one by one round studs in a variety of colors to represent this. It's a simple trick, but a highly effective one. Now, the 3-in-1 creator line regularly gives us some of the most clever and creative builds out there, and one of my favorites is also one of the smallest ever released. With 56 pieces, the Emerald Express is a surprisingly detailed build of a train engine, but the really neat thing happens when you get three of them. This set comes with instructions for how to build three different cars that can all be linked together to form a single train. I think this is really clever and a great idea for LEGO, however the idea of trying this with much larger sets is a little scary for my wallet. Now, a lot of LEGO's smallest sets are promotional polybags given away for various events, or just sold as a small impulse buy at select retailers. One of the most popular from the last few years though has got to be Doctor Strange's Interdimensional Portal. Not only is the final build a nice looking addition to any Marvel set, but the art on this packaging is just amazing. I know that Doctor Doctor Strange can travel through all the dimensions of the multiverse, but there's something a little surreal about seeing the real world on a LEGO package. I mean, LEGO's promotional sets are usually gifts with official LEGO purchases or included in LEGO magazines, but sometimes they actually include them in seemingly unrelated products. That was the case back in 2004 when LEGO rolled out one of the weirdest collaborations in toy history, promo sets in packs of Duracell batteries. LEGO is famously an analog toy, which made its partnership with Duracell seem very strange. Over the next two years, LEGO released a total of 12 sets that could be only picked up in special packs of batteries. A few of these were just basic sets like the 30-piece robot and the 26-piece helicopter, but we also got a 40-piece Jedi Starfighter, as well as a 43-piece ARC-170, although these last two were only released in South Korea. Some of the most unique sets from this era though were the two Bionicle builds that came out, which were only ever issued as part of this promotion. These same Duracell sets also gave us two small Exoforce builds, the 22-piece Mini Jet Fighter and the 19-piece Green Exo Fighter, both of which could only be obtained in Germany. Around the same time in Norway, buyers of certain Disney comics were treated to a free copy of the 29-piece Red Walker from the same series. The fact that LEGO has created so many regional exclusives is quite interesting. But perhaps the most unsettling of these promotional polybags though is the set simply known as the Birthday Clown. Now, if you're anything like me, the idea of a clown at your birthday party is pretty unsettling, but that doesn't change the fact that this is actually a really nice little build, if a bit creepy. The colors are vibrant, and the sausage used for the mouth really is a perfect fit. Now, as small as these sets are, there's an entire category of even smaller sets. You see, it seems that LEGO minifigures enjoy playing with LEGO as much as real people, and several sets include nearly microscopic recreations of LEGO's most famous offerings. The cozy house is exactly as the name describes, and comes with a few toys for the kids to play with. Longtime LEGO fans might just notice how these are pretty familiar though. If you look closely at these toys, you'll notice a striking similarity to a few older LEGO sets, namely the Gateway of the Squid from the Atlantis line and the Rock Raiders Granite Grinder. Other micro sets include the mini treehouse in the A-frame cabin, but the best can be found in the new Natural History Museum. Here, we've got an amazing display that clearly shows off tiny versions of three legendary sets. We've got the Forced Men's Hideout, complete with the iconic blue roof, a classic pirate ship, and the famous Yellow Castle. These sets really do belong in a museum. But that begs the question, where do minifigures actually get these LEGO sets? Well, there's no shortage of shopping in LEGO City, it seems. Sets like the train station and city square have small LEGO stores for minifigure travelers to visit. Apparently, LEGO minifigures also build tiny LEGO models of their own. But you see, there's a lot more. Because LEGO has released at least three LEGO stores as full sets, with the LEGO Stand, the LEGO Brand Retail Store, 
and a different set also called the LEGO brand retail store. Additionally, there's this townhouse toy store set, which while not technically a LEGO store, sells the famous Cafe Corner, which is a 2x3 printed tile piece. That's awesome. And taking things even further, DIY miniatures use their skills to create a mini replica of this LEGO classic brick box set, which even includes a very small, foldable instruction booklet. However, I bet you didn't know that sometimes LEGO needs to make some really serious decisions with their sets. Click here right now to watch a video on LEGO's most controversial topic, and don't forget to subscribe for more LEGO videos.